Long away. 
Jesus. I can hardly wait to see Jesus. I can hardly wait to see Jesus. I can hardly wait to see Him. Help us sing this. I can hardly wait to see Jesus. He's been so good. And I can hardly wait to see Jesus. I can hardly wait to see Jesus. I can hardly wait to see Him. Anybody else feel that way? Oh, I can hardly wait to see Jesus. to see Jesus. I can hardly wait to see Jesus. I can hardly wait to see Him. Come Lord Jesus, come quickly we pray. Every day that goes by, I long for his coming more and more. And you know, the word says that he is coming back for those who love his return. Love his returning. And I've got to admit that that is something that hasn't always been a part of my life. I haven't always longed for Jesus to come back. There has been such an emphasis throughout a lot of my life and a lot of the teaching and preaching that I've been exposed to throughout my life about just living a good life. You know, we laugh at people that say all you need to do is live a good life and be a good person. We know it takes more than that to be saved. But sometimes our preaching and our teaching is just about how to have a nice, comfortable, blessed life here and now. Amen. Thank you, Brother Nate. But there is coming a day when this life is going to be over as we know it. There is coming a time when a trumpet will sound. And I want to tell somebody today that if you want to ignore it, it's still going to happen. And if you want to pretend that it's not important, there still is going to come a day when the trumpet is going to sound and the bride of Christ is going to be lifted up out of this world. And the Bible says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I believe that his coming is very soon. Hallelujah. I believe his coming is very soon. And so today I want to preach a message about the coming of the Lord. And it seems that, you know, Sister Evelyn used to tease me that uh, I didn't know how to preach a message without preaching the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
And, and, you know, of course, I took that as a compliment because as far as I'm concerned, you do need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost because that's where the power comes from. But now there has been a shift. And I'll tell you, I cannot get behind the pulpit without telling whoever is listening, Jesus is coming back and he's coming very soon. Who are we? We are the church on 11th Street, founded on 1111 and taxed and, and tasked with the job of telling the world that we are in the 11th hour and that Jesus is getting ready to come back. Hallelujah. And so, uh, so often in the messages of the last year, uh, especially, we have heard the things that Jesus is teaching in his word through his parables and, and sitting down with his disciples and, and telling everyone about what he requires if you want to be in his bride. Now, make no mistake, we have been preaching holiness in this church from its inception. This is a holiness church, and we have preached separation unto God. As a matter of fact, we have taken every January as consecration month and fasted and prayed and preached on holiness and consecration every year uh, for as long as I can remember. And so we have preached holiness. How many know that, that it's a holy church that Jesus is coming back to take as his bride? Hallelujah. It is a portion of the church who has separated herself. And it is a church without spot or wrinkle. Now, did you get that way by yourself? Well, you know, the only way that we have access to salvation is through Jesus. But I want to just tell you today that there is more to serving the Lord than just having a salvation experience. And as a matter of fact, there is a place called Basilea. And it is not a place where they grow basil. <laughs> but it is a place of power and anointing and a place of closeness and intimacy with the Lord. And it is the place of falling in love with Jesus. Because I've got news for you. A casual experience is not going to get you into the bride of Christ. He's coming for somebody who has fallen in love with him. He's coming for somebody who has kept herself holy and separate unto him, who has said to the world, listen, we had a good run, but it is over, and I'm never going back. Somebody that says to those things of your past that I'm going to serve the Lord for the rest of my life, and I'm going to belong only to him. That's who he's coming back for. He is not coming back for a delusional church who's been been sleeping around with the world uh, behind his back and pretending uh, that everything is going to be okay. Jesus is coming back uh, for somebody who's ready. And someone who has prepared themselves. Hallelujah. You see, this life is such a short little preamble to eternity. Such a short little qualification lap. If you're interested in racing, they have a qualification lap that they take. And this life is nothing but a qualification lap for where you're going to fit into eternity. And so often when we hear the preaching and the teaching of what it is going to take to be in the bride, I've had people come up to me and say, I don't think I have a chance. And make no mistake, the way is narrow. And you're not going to be surprised <laughs> to be in the bride. You're not. Not one person is going to accidentally wind up in the bride of Christ. Hear me today. Not one person is going to accidentally end up. Did you accidentally get married to your husband or your wife? Did you accidentally just show up and have a ring? Did you accidentally just pick out the perfect dress? Did you accidentally put out the invitations? No, there was some planning that went into the wedding and the, 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 uh, the joining together with your husband or your wife. Amen? And there's some planning that is going into this. But here's what I want to do today. I want to preach a message entitled The Benefits of Basilea. 
the benefits of Basilea. Because so many times, you know, our human nature, we come in and, and we hear blah, 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 blah. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You don't do that. Blah, 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 blah. Here are all the rules and regulations. Blah, 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 blah. If you do this, you won't make it into the bride. Blah, blah, blah. All the blah, blah, blah is what you need to be focusing on because our minds go to the negative, but I've come to tell you it's a privilege and it is an honor beyond human comprehension to be in the bride of Christ. And I want to tell you, Jesus said it this way. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. You have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you I come to tell you that you didn't get where you are today even sitting in this church hearing the word of God you did not get here by yourself Heather it's good to see you today Sister, you didn't get here by yourself. God brought you into this service to speak to you to touch you to heal you today If you'll receive that, God has a miracle for you. Hallelujah. I feel that in the Holy Ghost right now. But I want to preach today because the devil is a liar and he is the father of lies. And I've come with joy in my heart to pull that back the curtain and say we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. In fact, a couple weeks ago, I told you we are disarming Satan around here. Hallelujah. Because he's so stupid. You know what he does? He picks up the same weapons over and over again. He's so ridiculous that he read the back of the book just like you did, just like I did, that there's coming a time that he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. He's going to be defeated. But you know what? He's so stupid. He keeps doing it over and over again, thinking he's going to get a different result. And here's what God dropped into my spirit. I'm going to get into my message in just a second. But here's what God dropped into my spirit. You see, Jesus said this. He said, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. I want you to just saturate your brain with that for a second. All right. Let that sink in for a second. Jesus said, behold. In other words, hey, you pay attention. Quit chewing gum. Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. That's what behold means. All right, quit chewing gum. That's what behold means. <laughs> if you <laughs> never mind, <laughs> somebody with gum just got a look on their face. <laughs> behold, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Quit chewing gum, he's coming back. Jesus said this behold. I give you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means you've got all the power that you need over Satan. It's all smoke and mirrors. He is simply an illusion of power. And here's what God dropped in my spirit. He said this. He said, you know, there's power in agreement. As a matter of fact, the word said that where where two or three agree as touching anything that If they agree in my name, it shall be done. When we begin to agree with the word of God, we're literally agreeing with God himself and releasing the power of agreement with God. He said, if you agree, then it shall be done. He said, I'll do anything that that you need if you'll just stand in agreement. But here's the, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Satan needs your agreement to have any power over you. And what he does is he comes up into your little arena and your little sphere where he's just out of your sight line. You ever you ever had somebody just stand right over here and you could feel that somebody's behind you. You got this uncomfortable feeling, but you can't quite see them. They're right behind you over here and you're turning, you're trying to, you know, you're just right. That's what the enemy will do. And he'll begin to, to just whisper in your ear and begin to undermine the the word of God that you know is true. Undermine the promises of God. Undermine the touch of God and the deliverance and the healing and everything that God has done for you because I want to tell you, we are a healed people. We are a a whole people. We are a blessed people. We're a people that knows blessings beyond what this world could ever fathom because of the benefits of Basilea and the benefits of knowing Jesus. But the enemy will come in and he'll begin to just undermine everything God has done. 
you're not going to get through this. Pastor Morgan, I know God healed you years ago of that degenerating spine disease, but this time it's not going away. And the enemy will just whisper, God is, is done with you. It's over. But I want to tell you that it's so simple because the word of God said in James 4, 7, it said, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You don't have to jump around and run, although that might help a little bit. You don't have to scream and look crazy, although that might help a little bit. But listen, all you've got to do is understand the power that Jesus has given to you over all the power of the enemy, over everything fear over every doubt all you've got to do is resist the devil and he's going to take a hike because he's afraid of you greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world quit agreeing with the devil that's exactly what you're doing you're not going to get that promotion at work well you know I probably won't you know, there's so many other qualified people. You're not going to have money for rent. Yeah, that sounds about right. Eric, you're never going to get your healing. Just come to terms with it. God's just skipping over you. No, you see, you've got to resist and you've got to bring every thought into captivity to the knowledge of Christ. He is the healer of all of my diseases. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He is my strong tower. He is my prince of peace. He's my mighty God, my everlasting father. He's everything that I need. He is my victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Quit agreeing with your adversary and start speaking the word of God right in his face. Devil, I am healed. Because the word of God said, uh, by his stripes, uh, I was healed. Uh, he said, by your stripes, you were healed. And by his stripes, you are healed. Uh, and listen, I'm going to claim the word of God. Uh, I don't care what the doctor has to say. Uh, I know the God uh, that created this body. I know the God uh, who spoke the world uh, into existence. Uh, there's not a battle uh, that he's ever lost. Uh, he's in charge. Uh, and I'm in the palm of his hand. Quit agreeing with the devil. Quit agreeing with your adversary. That's when he receives power because you gave him your power. Jesus gave you power and you said, okay, Satan, here. I don't know what to do with this, so here, devil. I don't know if I'm going to get to my message, but, but somebody needs to hear this. This is the second week in a row that I've been trying to preach this message, but somebody needs to hear. I feel the Holy Ghost. You are victorious in the name above every name. The Bible says this, that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess to the glory of God the Father that Jesus is Lord. I've come to tell you, there's no other God. God. There's no other Lord. There's no other power. But God is a mighty God. And he's got everything that you need. And you are in his plan. And his word will come to pass. He that shall come will come. You know, we went over some scriptures in Bible study in Peter where it said, I believe Second Peter, where it said that, you know, there are a bunch of folks in the end times. that are going to say... Nothing's different than it's ever been. It's always been something going on. It's always been some kind of trouble going on. There's always been, you know, ever since I've been serving the Lord and knowing about the rapture of the church, it seemed like preachers have been getting up and pounding their fist and scaring me to death. And, and, and I just got so almost to where I had to become immune to it to, to survive. And so even as a child, I was terrified. I was traumatized. And I got to a place where I don't want to be scared anymore. And, and so you pull away from it. But I've come to tell you that God has not given you the spirit of fear. 
Somebody hear what I'm saying today. When you hear me preaching about the bride of Christ, I'm preaching to you about the greatest thing that is ever going to happen in your life and throughout eternity. And God has put you in this place for such a time as this to reveal his word to you and get you ready for the sounding of the trumpet. I got to tell you, I'm thankful for what has been going on the last year because I'm not sure I would have really understood what I needed to understand to be ready when the trumpet sounded. But God, in his mercy, God, in his compassion and in his love for me, he said, I'm going to put you in a place and I'm going to put you in a time and I'm going to begin to release an anointing of revelation through different people and I'm going to begin to speak in a way that I've not spoken before and I'm going to get my my people, my bride ready. I'm going to give them the opportunity and equip them to become what they need to be. And the decision is yours. But here's what I want you to know. The enemy is going to come in and plant doubt. I do want to share one scripture. Maybe maybe I'll get to share one scripture here. <laughs> Second Timothy, the, second, the first chapter, the seventh verse. It says this. It says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. So here's what I've got to tell you. We're going to stop right there for a moment. Because when you encounter fear in your life, you see that the, the Lord has already given you power over that spirit of fear here because it did not come from God it is not ordained of God and you need to stop in your tracks and recognize where it came from is anybody hearing me today the enemy operates in fear the enemy operates in doubt and you've got to begin to recognize the patterns of who is speaking to you if you are getting confused well God is not the author of confusion (laughs) hallelujah but God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power so how do I respond to fear panic attacks seem like in the 80s there was just this big rash of fashionable panic attacks. Everybody just decided to start having panic attacks. And then the, then the doctors began to unleash all those medications, all the Prozac and all the, all the stuff, the, the Wellbutrin and all the, all the different things. Those are probably way outdated now. But, but I used to deal with a lot of people that, that had just, oh, I have panic attacks. And I'm not a doctor, so I'm not here to tell you anything about about, uh, the, the physical, physiological stuff that might be going on. But I am here to tell you that God has not given you the spirit of fear. And that God has not placed a spirit of depression upon you. Here's what I do know about depression. I know that in my own life, when I've been weighed down with a spirit of depression so heavy upon me that I could not pray, that I could not worship God just going through the motions trying to get from one day to the next day if you think it doesn't happen to preachers you've got another thing coming but I come to tell you there is deliverance because when I got into the presence of almighty God I said Lord you got to help me and he said praise me I said Lord I can't I can't do it my arms weigh a hundred pounds each I cannot lift my hands I don't know what to say I'm a preacher and I don't know how to pray right now he said go ahead and praise me you know what I did I did this I did this literally my arms did not want to raise up but I began to praise him and I began to speak with my mouth I began to say thank you Jesus Lord you're greater than my depression pretty soon my hand began to come up about this high and I began to feel a little something deep on the inside that I hadn't felt in weeks and months and then my hands begin to come up and I received victory in the name of Jesus because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and when you begin to resist the devil quit agreeing with your adversary quit saying Lord uh, that I don't know what to do and Lord I'm not going to make it through no you see God doesn't want to hear that from you you don't have to have a lot of faith 
just like a mustard seed just like a mustard seed and that mountain of depression is going to have to move hallelujah that mountain of sorrow and pain and destruction is going to have to move out of your way with somebody with just a little mustard seed of faith that says Lord I trust you I believe you and I'm going to take the power you have not given me the spirit of fear but a power and of love and of a sound mind you see the enemy has attacked the people of God and made you think that you got all kinds of, uh, of stuff going on that is just an attack of the enemy. I've come to tell the people of God that you don't have to go around with malfunctions going on because God has given you the spirit of a sound mind. Half of the people that are on medication today in the church need to put that stuff on the altar and say, Lord, I'm standing on the word of God. You gave me the spirit of a sound mind. Now listen, I am not standing here telling anybody to go off of your medication. All right, let's get that cl uh, real clear. I'm not standing here telling you to go off your medication. But here's what you can do. You can say, Lord, I don't want this stuff anymore. You've given me the spirit of a sound mind. And so, Holy Ghost, I'm standing on your power. Lord, you've given me the spirit of power, the spirit of a love and of a sound mind. And so, Lord, I want healing. And guess what? Your doctor is going to tell you pretty soon. You don't need these medications anymore. Your doctor is going to tell you we're not going to have you on this stuff anymore because the great physician knows how to heal the mind. The great physician knows how to heal the broken heart and a broken spirit. I come today to tell you that God is a mighty God and he came to make you whole. He came to put the pieces back together again. He's coming back, but he's coming for somebody who said, Lord, I want to be ready. Lord, I want to be in a place where I'm whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The message that I was wanting to preach today is the benefits of Basilea. Basilea is not salvation. Basilea literally means kingdom of God in scripture. And Jesus speaks of Basilea over and over again when he's speaking of, ba of Basilea or kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven in the, the parables in the gospels. He is not speaking of salvation. He is speaking of a place beyond salvation of ruling and reigning with him throughout all eternity. Hallelujah. Now, just for a second, I want you to forget everything that you learned all your life and come let us reason together for one minute, all right? Just for one minute. Do you really think that Jesus is going to choose those who accepted him and then didn't darken the door of a church? never learned how to pray, never paid their tithes to rule and reign for all eternity right next to him in his throne. Do you really think that he's going to choose somebody that said, well, I'm more concerned with my life and, and, and the things that I'm doing right now and my family and my job and my cars and my house and, and all these things and getting this stuff in order. You know, Jesus told us about the disciples. He said that there were those when he was going out to, to ask them to come and follow him that would not come because they had different things to do. They just got married. They just bought a house. They just did that, this and that, and they couldn't follow him. Oh, but it was the ones who were mending their nets that said, Lord, we're going to lay down our nets and we're going to get up out of our work and out of what we're so occupied with and we're going to follow you. There were those, even Luke the physician said, I'm done with everything else because I see something in you and I'm going to follow you. I want to tell you, that Jesus is looking for those to be his bride and those who will step into Basilea who are willing to turn their back on everything else. 
and it will cost you something. But there are benefits in Basilea beyond your wildest imagination. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 103 in verse 2. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Listen, I've already told you that he is the Prince of Peace, and he will give you peace that goes beyond any understanding. He is the healer, the great physician. He is everything that we need. But let me just share a couple more scriptures with you. Romans, the eighth chapter and the 28th verse. I want to tell somebody that needs to hear this today, that God has a plan for you, and he knows what's going on in your life. And the word says, we know that all things, somebody say all. all. Is that a misprint? Because surely the stuff I've been going through doesn't fit with this. No, the word says all things work. <laughs> Hallelujah. That trial is working for you, it is working on your behalf. And all you want to do is shut it down. All you do is want to get out from under it. All you want is for that pressure to stop. But I want to tell you that it is working for you. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If I ever heard a description of the bride of Christ, it's right here. Those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. Can I tell you today that Jesus is coming back and he's coming back for somebody that has some perspective on their trials, some perspective on the things that they're going through. Paul said this. He said that your, that your light affliction is only lasting for a moment and that a greater work of glory is going to be revealed in you because of your light affliction. I've had a change in my perspective recently. I've been walking around saying thank you for my trial. Thank you, Jesus, for the storm. Thank you, Jesus, for this difficult day. Thank you today, Lord, that nothing seems to be going right because your word declares that this is working for my good, for my blessing, for my healing, for the power of God in my life. Oh, if we could get a perspective on the word of God, if we could quit agreeing with the adversary, agreeing with the destructive message of the devil and come into a place where we receive the word of God and bring every thought into captivity to the knowledge of Christ. I've got to take hold of every thought. Do you think that you're just so holy that your thoughts are just made out of gold? Just precious little thoughts are the only things rolling around in your head. No, you got evil thoughts rolling around in your head. For two reasons. Your flesh... And the devil likes to prey upon the thoughts and the mind. This is the, enemy, the, the enemy's battlefield right here. But we can bring every thought into captivity. We've got to have a renewing of our mind every single day. Hallelujah. And so I've been standing upon the word of God. And I've been speaking it out loud. I don't care if anybody hears me. I'm bringing this thought. You see, when one of those thoughts comes into my mind that is contrary to what God has spoken to me, that what God has allowed prophecies to come over me, what I've seen in his word and every promise that God has made to me, when those thoughts come in, into my mind uh, that are contrary uh, to what God said uh, the end of the story was going to be I say in the name of Jesus uh, I rebuke that thought uh, I'm bringing it into captivity to the knowledge of Christ right now because even this catastrophe is working for my good. Even this disappointment, even this heartbreak is working for my good. It's doing something in me that will allow me to be an overcomer. And Revelation 3.21 said that to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. If you want to rule and reign 
reign and being the bride of Christ, you're going to have to have something to overcome. But you keep squealing and saying, I can't do it. Get it out of my way. Take it away, Jesus. I don't want to do it anymore. Listen, I want to tell you something, that there is no malachos in Basilea. I'm not speaking in tongues right now. No malachos in Basilea. You know why I love to use that scripture? Because that's been used against me. But the word of God is sharp and quick and more powerful than any two-edged sword today. And there is no malakos in Basilea. Malakos in the Greek, it means soft ones. You see, the King James, they interpreted it as effeminate. And it's been used by people to tell me that I'm not going to be in heaven. But I got news for you. I'm not a soft one because I've been tried in the fire. I've been through the battle. And I've come out victorious because God is a mighty God. And I know that the battle is just making me what I need to be. Thank you for my trial. Thank you for my trouble. Thank you for my pain. Thank you for the storm because it's making me an overcomer. Hallelujah. 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 My God. Hallelujah. Somebody needs a change in perspective today. God has called you. God has anointed you. But all you've done with that calling and that anointing is been malakos. Run away from every trial. Run away from every challenge. Run away from every time that God spoke to you and opened a door. You couldn't slam the door that God opened fast enough. Then you have the audacity to sit there and be disappointed at where you are in God. God's not opening any doors for me. Look where I'm at today. I should be so much. God promised me this and that. Big baby. Big old malakos. Listen, I love you. But if you're Malakos, I'm going to wave goodbye one of these days. Because there's not a Malakos that's going to be among the bride that's lifted up out of this world when the trumpet sounds. You're going to have to have a spine of steel. You're going to have to have a will that says, for the rest of my life, no matter what comes my way, I've chosen, I've made the decision, I'm going to serve the Lord, mind, body, soul, and spirit. I'm going to be what God wants me to be. That's what it's going to take. Hallelujah. And so here's what I'm trying to get to you today. That all these benefits, some of you have just been so, you know, so down in the dumps and you know I mean some of you shows all over your face some of you are a little bit better actors (laughs) but but I'm your pastor and God speaks to me so guess what you can run but you can't hide because God is going to spill it God is going to tell me what I need to know to be your pastor like it or not you're going to have to leave if you don't want God to tell me what is going on in your life but here's what I come to tell you you can stand straight and know that God has not forsaken you you, that God has not forgotten you. God is simply putting a provision in your life so that you can be for him, with him forever in eternity. That's what he's doing. So those things you're going through, they ought, to, they ought to make you sharper. They ought to make you refined. They ought to, you know, sometimes you've got you to rub up against some stuff, some sandpaper and some polishing agents before you're going to come out shining and come out in, in uh, the shape that you want to be. You see, the problem is we've got an entitled church, not RPA, but the church as a whole is entitled today. They want everything dumped in their lap. There was a young minister that came to be part of our church a number of years ago and and he was so excited to be here and and he had had a license but was coming uh, into a new place in his ministry and, and so he moved here from across the country to be part of this church. 
And I knew him a little bit, but I didn't really know him all that well. But I noticed that when we would get into prayer meetings, that he would kind of back off into the corner. <laughs> and I'd look at him. And then one day he came to me and he said, Pastor, please don't call on me to pray or, or lead anything. And I said, well, I thought you were a preacher. You don't want to pray and you're a preacher. <laughs> and you know what he, he finally I, I got to talking to him about ministry and here's what he said he said well I'll tell you this and he had been to a Bible college that had indoctrinated him with some things that made him feel this way he said this he said I've come to a place where I just believe ministry is just going to pour out of me And I can just passively stand there and ministry. If I'm called and anointed, then ministry is just going to pour forth out of me. Listen, you big old malicose. I've got news for you. If you're going to be in ministry, Jesus said, if they hated me, who do you think you are? The servant is not greater than the master. You're going to come up against some battles. You're going to come up against some struggles. You're going to have to say goodbye to some friends that don't understand your walk with the Lord. You're going to have to step away from the people who are trying to weigh you down. There are going to be some battles. Jesus said, all that will walk in righteousness and holiness are going to suffer persecution. Now, one person in this church has had their head cut off for the gospel. In fact, I don't think anybody's been slapped. Have, well, Sister Evelyn maybe has slapped a few people for the sake of the gospel. I've never gone to jail for preaching. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? The things that God is allowing in your life, your brothers and sisters across the ocean are not having to go through some of the trials that you're going through. But you know what they are doing? They're getting their Sunday best on. And in Pakistan, people like us are dressing in their Sunday best and going into a secret cave to have church. Because they'd be thrown in jail if they were caught. Not, not just because of being Christian, but because of the kind of church that they have. The people that they are, just like you and me. I've never had to hide and have church in a cave. So, I want you to understand, God is facilitating your ability to be in the bride by allowing you to go through some things. You look at your brothers and sisters, and do you know, here, here's what the word says. And if you've been in my office, you've probably heard me tell you this, because this is one of my counseling tools. The word of God says, he that compares himself among himself is not wise. And so quit comparing yourself to somebody else's trials. Quit comparing yourself to what somebody else is going. You know, sometimes it seems like, like Sister Linda is just on the mountaintop. I mean, all the time. She just jumps and hollers and, and she can't even walk up and put her offering in. She's got to run the aisles and put her offering in. But you don't know what she's been through. You don't know the years that she's been waiting with the clock ticking for her demise because the doctor said there's nothing that we can do about your condition until God reached down and touched her and healed her body and the impossible became possible. You don't know what the brother or sister on your right or left has been going through. Quit comparing yourself to somebody else and understand that God's got a plan. God's got a plan and he's working on on your behalf every single trial every single problem was not meant and not allowed into your life to destroy you but God knows how to turn it around God knows how to take destruction and make something beautiful he said I'm going to take your ashes everything that is burned up everything that is over and done and destroyed he said I know how to make beauty out of ashes Hallelujah. Beauty out of ashes. Shandana Bokoshi Atala Dada Masata. 
Somebody get a hold of that today because the enemy has come in and is trying to tell you something that is going to take you off track. But God is not just the author, but he's the finisher of your faith. He said, my word will not re return void unto me. He said, I watch over my word to perform it. Come on, somebody that knows that God is the word and the word is God. He is going to come through for you. But you need to get your eyes off of the adversary and off of the deception and off of the lies. And I just come to tell somebody, quit, quit agreeing with the enemy and start taking authority over him. Start resisting him. He will flee. He will flee. Depression has got to go. Discouragement has got to go. Confusion has got to go. Turmoil in your family has got to go. In the name of Jesus, when you stand and begin to to agree with the word of God begin to agree with every promise begin to agree with what God has spoken over you I've known almost every single one of you long enough to know that God has spoken over everyone God has a plan for every single one of you and God's word has not lost its effectiveness in your life if he said it I believe it his word will stand forever Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away but my word is forever yes, yes, yes. hallelujah hallelujah one more scripture Nate if you would come first Thessalonians 4 16 hallelujah if you forget, I'm here to remind you today that there's coming a time, there's coming a day. If the Lord would grant us to know the moment, and, and, and of course the word says no man knows the day or hour, but if the Lord were to grant us to know, it's so real that you could walk over to a calendar and you could mark it down and you could put the very time, the very second when the trumpet is going to sound, it is coming, it will come to pass. He that shall come will will come and will not wait, will not tarry. I come to tell you, Jesus is coming and behold, the bridegroom cometh. Oh yes, Lord, come quickly. The bride, the spirit and the bride say come. Oh listen, there's, uh, there's something that's growing in the heart of the wise virgins, the potential bride that is beginning to receive revelation and knowledge and understanding of who they are and beginning to long for things that maybe they didn't think about not too long ago there's beginning to be a desire in their heart to say Lord come quickly come quickly hallelujah a desire a love for his returning 1 Thessalonians 4 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, a shout Glory. hallelujah with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first <laughs> hallelujah we've lost some friends we've lost some loved ones and listen I want to tell you that all the bride that has gone on to be with the Lord they're gonna rise up when the trumpet sounds Hallelujah. Look at the next verse. This is my passage. <laughs> this is my hope. Hallelujah. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, it's going to be worth it all one of these days. Hallelujah. I said it's going to be worth it all one of these days. The trials that you had to go through are going to seem laughable. The heartaches that you had to endure are going to seem like nothing. One day when you see Jesus face to face. Oh, listen. The word says we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. One of these days, I'm going to see him face to face. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the benefits of Basilea. Listen, quit feeling insecure that you may not make Basilea. Get a stiff up spine 
and get a determination that for the rest of my life, whatever I have to do, I'm going to serve the Lord with all of my heart because many are called, but few are chosen. And whatever I have to do, I'm going to be in the chosen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be in the chosen when the trumpet sounds. Oh, listen, this trial is just for a moment. This heartache is just temporary. But when you walk through the fire, he said, I'm going to be with you. And it's going to be worth it all. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Hallelujah. It's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all. Some beautiful, happy day. It's going to be worth every long mile, every heartache and every trial. When we get through the pearly gates, we're all going to shout for joy as we look upon the Savior's face. Oh, then we're going to sing the story of His saving amazing grace and the memory of trial and test forever He will erase. Oh, it's going to be worth Think about it. It's going to be worth it all. Some beautiful, happy day. So don't get discouraged when trouble brings you low. Oh, Jesus is going to take care of you. So take courage in your soul. Some sweet day, it's gonna be worth it all. Oh, it's gonna be worth it all. I it's gonna be worth oh, it all. Someday, it's gonna be worth it all. Some beautiful, happy day. Oh, every long mile, it's gonna be worth every long mile. Every heartache, every heartache, and every time. Take care of you, so take courage in your soul, no malicos. And if you get weary, you think that you'd surely fall. Just remember that some sweet day, it's gonna be worth it all. It's gonna be worth it all. Hallelujah. Somebody take courage today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not going to be very much longer. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back.